Hi everybody, I'm Dave from the Polypad team and I am excited to share with you our September and October 2023 Polypad updates. Let me start with these dice on the canvas. You can see I clicked and dragged to select all of them and I can click roll. But a new feature that we added is the ability to add buttons on the canvas that can control certain actions. So I'm gonna add a roll button here. To do that, I need to go into authoring mode in the file tab. I'll turn on the authoring mode toggle. I have all these options available in authoring mode. There's a link right here to learn more about authoring mode and all of the customizations that you can do as an author. But I'm gonna select all four of these dice, go to the more tools menu, and you can see I'm in, uh, I'm in this authoring section of the more tools menu that I can expand. And one of the options here is an action button. So I click that action button and it automatically adds this button to the canvas. Now I have to decide what I want this button to do. So I go to the drop down and you can see I could have it show the dice. If I made them invisible, that would show the dice. I could hide them. I could toggle back and forth between hidden and shown. Uh, I could flash them on the screen for a few seconds. What I want to do is roll the dice which is randomized. So I'm going to click this as randomize. I can make this button a little bit bigger, even change the color if I wanted to. I could change the text, so I'll change this to roll. And I guess I could make it smaller now. There we go. Uh, I can see the tiles associated with that button. So if I had many buttons on the screen, I could click this. And I can test the button in authoring mode. That seems to do what I want. So now uh, in authoring mode, I can make all these edits to the button. When I leave authoring mode, and now I'm viewing it as a student would, all I can do is click the button. I, I can't move it. I can just click and it'll roll the dice. So you can make a variety of great activities with a combination of flash and hide and roll. Let me share uh, one that I made. I'll put the link in the comments of this video here not save those changes. So you can see it says, what is the sum of all the numbers on the dice? I'll show you the dice so we could find the sum of those. What's that? 25, no, 15, 21 maybe. But I'm going to hide them and roll all the dice in the background. And then I could imagine flashing these uh, for two seconds. Students talk about what sum they see and then share with the class. Ooh, I saw a 10 and then a five and a four. Let me see that again. 10, five, four. So what's that? 19 maybe? And then I could I could reveal. Here's my 10. I could even pull them apart if I wanted to. There's the 10 that I saw and the five and the four. And other students might have seen it differently. So we could have a really nice conversation about how students saw the numbers. And then when I'm ready to do it again, I can put them back, hide it, roll them again. And on we go. Awesome. So that's uh, a lot of things can be done with the action buttons. Let me go back to just a new polypad for a moment. Yeah, I don't want to save any of these changes. The other really exciting thing we added is a function machine. So I'm going to go to the algebra section and add a function machine to the canvas. I've made a longer video, a polypad pointer video about function machines, which I'll drop a link to in the comments as well uh, to get uh, a deeper overview of function machines. But let me just show you how they work. This is starting as an x plus 1. I can double click on the function. Maybe I'll change it to x plus 3. And as I drag in tiles, uh, they come out the other end of the function machine. Three bigger. I could do number cards. Let me go to the number section here. I could put in a single tile and it comes out as four. We can put in number bars. We'll put in seven here. And you'll notice that it comes out as 10. How lovely is that? Now, if I put in, let me just give myself some room here. If I put in 10, because we don't have a number bar for 13, it doesn't come out as a number bar. It just comes out as a number card of 13. We could do a variety of different functions. Let me change this to x divided by three. And I could make this bigger. And I'll put in some prime factor circles, like I'll put in three, and it'll come out as one. If I put in 15, 
it'll come out as five. But if I put in like 19, it comes out as six and a third. Here it's shown as a decimal. I could change that to a fraction if I want. There it is as 19 over three or a mixed number. I like seeing it as a mixed number. So when I put in 17, it still comes out as a decimal because I just changed it on this number card, but I can change it on the entire function machine. I want everything to come out as a mixed number. So now when I put in something not divisible by three, it comes out as four and a third. If I put in something divisible by three, it'll come out as a prime factor circle. Another really nice feature on the function machine, I can tabulate it and I get a table of values of all the inputs and outputs of that function machine. I could make a scatter plot. So there's all the data that I have here. I could attach a graph to this, y equals 3x. Let's make this bigger and connect it. Uh, oh, it's not 3. Yeah, that's the, wrong, that's the wrong equation. I didn't do that on purpose, but it doesn't connect my dots because it's y equals x over 3. There we go. That looks a lot better. But a great use of function machines is playing guess my rule with students. So as a teacher, I could make this machine uh, before class, and I could go to the function machine, and I could turn off show expression. And so imagine I did this whole activity that I just did with the expression off. We did the in inputs and outputs, and a student thought maybe the rule is y equals 3x. So you could graph it, and they could say, oh, Lots of great mathematical thinking in, in that guess of the rule, but that's not quite it. Uh, so that's that's super fun. Uh, I could also show the expression, but have it go to invert mode to show the inverse. Let me just zoom in on the function here. So let's say I do something like 2x plus 1, but I want to have it go in invert mode. I could decide to show the expression or not. So here, when I try to put in a number card, it doesn't go in, but I can put it in the output and it shows me the input of that really nice. So I could also have students try to guess the rule when I'm putting in outputs and I'm seeing what the input is. And if I wanted to, I could go the other way and eventually show the expression. Uh, you can put multiple function machines together, which is really exciting. So I could do uh, a function machine here and a function machine here. And I want to know what happens when I do x plus 1 and maybe 3x. Could I write one function machine that does that in one step? Right. So then we could ask students, can you come up with a rule that does that in one step? Could be kind of fun. So all sorts of great things to explore with function machines. A few other quick things that I want to share that are our new updates on Polypad. Uh, we added an arrow tile in the geometry section. If I go to geometry under patterns and art, there's an arrow that you can use this handle to change the size and direction of the arrow. Uh, we have a flip option on the arrow, so that's nice. And the final thing to show is, let me go back to a polygon here. You may know that our polygons ha uh, have a starting value of 1, or a starting weight of 1 for the balance scale. So if I put this here, and I put a 1 over here, that'll balance. Now let's say I'm doing an activity where uh, I want this to be worth 7. So I could put on another 6 here and make this 7. It's not balanced right now, but if I click on the balance scale, one of the options in the action bar is balance. And when I click this, the weight of this octagon is going to change from 1 to 7. So I click balance. You can see now it's balanced. And that's true for um, any of these tiles that I add out to the canvas. So now that's 7. If I put this one on, I need another 7 to make it 14. Here's 21 and so on. But the other, so that's that's not new. What is new is the ability to set the value of a shape with the label inside of authoring mode. So I'm going to turn on authoring mode and I'm going to, I don't know, I'm going to set this as a label of eight and let me uh, make that font a little bit bigger just so we can see it. And now this, 
tile has a value of eight. Let me leave authoring mode and put this on the scale. Get rid of all these sevens. And let me go find an eight to show you that that balances. There we go, that is eight. How lovely is that? And so that again, to change that label, I went to authoring mode, I clicked on the shape, and I changed the label. If I make this nine, it's no longer balanced because now it has a value of nine. So now I could, uh, I could make this nine. And that's true just on that shape. So when I showed you with the octagon and I set the value of that one octagon, with the balance feature on the balance scale, that applied to all octagons. But now, if I take out this other hexagon, this still has a value of one because I haven't changed that, uh, I haven't changed that label. You can see now that balances with one. Wonderful. So those are all the updates that I wanted to share. Lots of exciting things from action buttons to function machines and arrow tiles and labels on polygons. We're really excited uh, to see how you use this in your work with students. Let us know on any of our social media channels or in the comments of this video. Thanks for watching.